Guten Tag, as they say in this part of uh, Germany. Paddy David at uh, Archon HQ, uh, out here covering the Canaries tour with uh, photographer to the stars, Paul Chesterton. So we thought we'd, uh, as we're at a loose end this lunchtime, I'm sure uh, I'm sure you people have got better things to do, but uh, anything Norwich City-wise, um, given we're out here, talking to the guys, watching the games. So, um, But first I thought I'd... Uh, in the spirit of Michael Bailey, give you a little bit of a tour of uh, our humble abode. So I'm just going to turn the camera around here. Right, so this is our lovely courtyard, which is probably the only second time I've been out here since we arrived. I'm going to go inside into our lovely living room. And there he is, the man himself, Mr. Chesterton. Give, give us a wave, son. How you doing? We'll come back to him later. Uh, lovely living room, all mod cons, as long as you've got your English PowerPoints. Uh, let's have a look here, and we are doing some work, contrary to popular myth. Uh, a few highlights here from City's Twitter feed from Doosburg, where we were last night. So, uh, see you shortly, Paul. Yeah, look forward to it. Excellent, right, here we go, kitchen. This is where it all goes off, or not, as the case may be. Now, what, what have we got in here? Water, very healthy, not so healthy. As you'll see, very few have been consumed, far too busy for that. Uh, and as you see, two Brits abroad, it's all about uh, McDonald's, I think, since we got here. Getting very acquainted with the Big Mac. And uh, I said I wouldn't do this, but I'm going to show you Mr. Chesterton's bedroom. Photographer, that's all I'll say about that. And what is that all about? Sweet dreams, I do not know. There you go. That is what photographer's room looks like. Messy is what I would suggest. Down the hallway, as opposed to mine, which is immaculate. Sweet dreams again. Uh, this is preparation. Ironing. Can't be doing with the creases. So, uh, view from the room there. There's Mr. Chesterton's beamer. Okay, yeah, enough of that. Right, to business. So, as I say, we're basically out here, covered the game uh, yesterday, Duesburg and the 23s. I'm just going to clip this in, so apologies for two seconds. Okay, I'll pop around. Okay, and there's Mr. Chester. So yeah, so basically, uh, you know, anything you want to ask us really as we're out here and uh, speaking to the people who matter. Um, but very impressed with what I saw last night, mate. Obviously, yeah, you're, you're yeah. looking at it down the lens, but I think Daniel Farker said he felt he was the first probably game since he's been in charge where you could just see what he's trying to do. You know, defensively, Zimmerman, um, Franker, I thought they were very solid. Yeah, very Every solid. ball that came into the box headed it away. Um, and also, I liked, although you weren't too sure, where you read and uh, Vrancic in the middle of the park, I like that air sort of dovetailing. Yeah, now you explain to me quite what their roles were. It's difficult to see from my perspective sometimes, but now you showed, told me what the roles were. Yeah. Yeah, it did seem to work. Nothing got past them much, and what did got mopped up by Zimmerman and Frank. It was very good, actually, to be honest with you. It was yeah. promising, you know, despite the doubt that's around it. Looked yeah, no, of course. I mean, obviously, you know, the big story in the last couple of days was Jacob Murphy. Um, I mean, I was, I was always going to happen. It was just a case of when, I think, once, you know, Newcastle made it clear they were keen on the lad. Um, but I think... And I asked Mr. Farker about this yesterday. In terms of, you know, do Norwich need to go out and spend massive money to replace that guy? I think the answer is no, because his twin brother can do a job. Do, and again, he showed last night, I thought, in patches. He looks like following on from the back end of last season under Alan Irving, maybe the penny's dropped. And he believes himself that he can actually do a job for Norwich in the Championship. And if he can step up, then maybe it softens the blow of losing Jacob. I think almost without doubt. I mean, he completely ruined their left back for a 20 minute spell there. He was getting behind them time and time and time again. Yeah. He's like he had, you know, he's like, I'm here now, Josh, this me. Yeah. So, yeah, look, he looked good. He was totally, I'd say, totally ruining their left back. Which right. was great last night. Sorry, mate. Yeah, I mean, we've obviously got a few comments coming in. Nick Deal's expecting Madison to be involved this season. It's a tricky one. I mean, he played last night. Yeah. Um, there's no doubt in the man's talent. I think that's safe to say. Um, but. I don't know, I just think maybe he's still a little bit raw, a little bit lightweight, and obviously he might get a chance early early on because of the Pritchard injury. You know, Daniel Farker telling us as we were there at the training session yeah. Tuesday that he's out minimum five, possibly longer weeks uh, with his ankle ligament damage at Cambridge. 
So, okay, you take him out of the equation, and it is Wes, it is Madison, if he wants to go with that type of, you know, number 10, buzzing in and around, Nelson Oliveira, Cameron yeah. Jerome, yeah. Now, clearly, Wes has got a little injury at the minute. You know, we were there Tuesday, weren't we? He was training away from the main group. Yeah, changed very very light training. Ice yeah. back on the thighs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Away at the end, I noticed. Yeah, he, but, so I thought Madison, at the end of last season, looked really good. He came on, he yeah. scored his goal, and... Yeah. Uh, I'm hoping that he goes on and does what he you know, promises to do. But as you say, I think maybe last night didn't look as, as effective no. as he could have done. I just think, yeah, I just think in certain games he's going to look better. Um, but, you know, you probably would, would have a reservation. A little bit like Josh, Alex Neil always used to say, the reason Jacob had accelerated his development because he thought he did without the ball as well as with the ball. You know, he would track back, help out his fullback. Didn't quite think the penny had dropped with Josh. Uh, in terms of that part of, of a wide man's game and maybe with Madison you know we know we saw it last season you know we've covered them long enough now that there'll be tests coming up in the championship when they go away from home and it isn't so much about the technicians it's can you match it can you match uh, obviously not this season but last season the Rotherhams the Burtons you know when when you're getting players in your face high pressing which they will do because we we, we know now we've seen enough of these preseason games we've heard from, from the head coach he wants to dominate the ball he wants to play out from the back and at Stevenage, we saw it. You know, that was their downfall. Um, that, that trying to play it around the back. There was a Stevenage fan to my left. Basically, these like to take a chance. As in, you know, inviting players on. That's fine if, if you're going to look after the ball. But if you're going to give chances away that high up in your, in your own penalty box, th there's a concern there. But if that's the way he wants to go, then you can see a Madison maybe getting a, an opportunity along yeah, the way. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. They've got to go to Rotherham and Burton next year and win. It's as simple as that. Well, certainly Burton, yeah. Burton, yeah. Certainly Burton, yeah. 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 Well, in the cup, of course, if they draw. Well, yeah, let's, let's not talk that one up too much, mate. Ben Woodward, uh, who do you think will be our centre back pairing or trio? Good question. I think well, you look at a tricky one. Well, you look at the options at the minute. I mean, the two lads who played last night, Zimmerman, uh, Franca, as we just touched on there in the intro, very impressed with them. I thought physically they looked the part. Aerially, they, they went and attacked the ball. That's what I liked, personally. Okay, yeah, they were playing against 10 men for a long period. Um, so it's hard to maybe make a a firm judgment but there was, there was no doubt Franca particularly he sensed the danger and he was coming and meeting crosses into the box yeah, and we all know we, we, we saw it painfully and so did a lot of the Norwich fans last season home and away that an inability to sense danger from set pieces or just balls in general play into your box was, was the downfall we saw the goals against Colum not good enough they, if they don't address that this season it doesn't matter how smooth they are in possession they're, they're not going to improve on 8th position so they need to build from the back solid base and I think those two guys bearing in mind as we were touched on there with Pritchard we know close is out for the start of the season I think on the evidence of last night if they, if they, they perform well again you'd expect them to start against Bielefeld on Friday I think they're in pole position I don't think he'll go with a three because don't work no it's, it's, it's you know injecting another element that they're probably the players aren't completely au fait with I, um, I disagree you know. a little bit. I think Zimmerman's a shoe in so far. Do you? As long as he, we talked about it last night. Well, he certainly he, played enough minutes. And the way I, that's, that's that's my, that was my point. He, we talked about it on the way over last night. Yeah. He hasn't. He played every. He's played every single game. He works yeah. hard in training. When they finished training the other day, he went in goal. Yeah. Um, the, the man seems to have the engine of you know of a midfielder up and down, up and down. It's sort of, you know impressive so far. His first break when it's about half an hour before the end. Last yeah, night, yeah, first yeah. time he sat down. Yeah. You like you remind me. You liked your room because we were at. Uh, Training session on Tuesday, you had the, got a nice frame of Zimmerman. Yeah, got Gordon, them, Gordon Banks. Yeah, it was one for the cameras, but it's still a good frame, do you know what I mean? Yeah, still, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was good. But he seems to have that energy and he trains hard as well. And I yeah. know he seems quite vocal on the pitch. Yeah, yeah. Last night, yeah, as well, I know, urging, yeah, yeah. urging yeah, yeah. the lads on, you know. But he's got to step up to the championship. It's all right doing it at Stevenage, it's all yeah, right yeah. doing it at yeah. Duisburg's second team in yeah, Thunderstorm, yeah. but can he do it? On a cold Tuesday night at Burton or at. Uh, well, 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 well what was Northern outpost, yeah. we have to go to. Yeah, you know, what we're saying here, Paul, is. That is that is the big unknown, isn't it? Yeah. All these lads, they're coming in. Yeah, they're looking the part, but we all know pre-season, you don't read anything into it at he's all. Got, I think he's got the build and aggression of a championship. So yeah, that, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He can match yeah. some of the um, some of the lads you come in, you come across. Yeah, definitely. What in terms of you know we've got another question here. You know, there's a lot of speculation inevitably about players players in players out. Terry Jones, can we afford to lose Cameron? I'm going to get your opinion on Cameron Jerome. This man is not. A fan, are you, Mr. Chester? Yeah, whatever I say now is going to come across as harsh, but no, I think um, I'm a big West Ham fan, as most people will know by now, and yeah. I liken him to Carlton Cole. One minute he's putting one into the top <laughs> corner, and the next minute he's scoring a great screamer as he bounces off his ankle, hits his shoulder, and goes into the corner under the goalkeeper's body. Yeah, there's some between the screamer and the lucky fluke. 
you just need a bit of consistency in front of goal. Yeah, yeah. And I say, he's got it, he's got talent, he's, he's, he comes across as a really nice guy. I think sometimes I'd like to see him be a bit more aggressive. But yeah. it's just, yeah, he is your Carlton Cole, I'm afraid. Do I say yours, Norwich City's Carlton yeah, yeah, Cole. Yeah. yeah. And if my son's watching this now, he's a big Carlton Cole fan, I was the opposite. You know, I just like to see a striker who, you know, you got you want him to ball in front of goal, one on one with the keeper, and you want it more than one in four times yeah. to go in the back of the net. Yeah. That's my opinion, you know. I mean, in terms of, but I mean, the real, I mean, he's getting linked. I think I've seen Forest, um, Sunderland. I've seen them linked as well. And it's not the first time this summer. I mean, all we can say is Stuart Webber's out here, Steve Stone's out here. There's nothing imminent in or out. Um, basically, spoke to him again um, last night at length. Um, and really, it, you know, as with the Josh Murphy to Middlesbrough for four million. Absolutely nothing at all in that. No, that's ridiculous. You know, uh, and that's that is cheeky. They're being cheeky there, trying but, to but, twice the brother but, up. But there's no, but, well, no, there's, I mean, Stuart Webber more or less said to me uh, at the 23s game yesterday without breaking any confidence. He said that there's been no approach whatsoever. So, you know, all I'd say is inject um, an element of maybe scepticism about these reports about Jerome. I mean, ultimately, you know. If there is anything in it, then it will develop. But certainly at the minute, I, I don't think that there's any real clubs have approached Norwich and have started to open talks. I think there's a lot of smoke and mirrors at this stage of the summer. What I would say, just by way of a little teaser, I spoke to Nelson Oliveira after the game yesterday. Um, and he is one who has been linked, I think, Wolves, uh, Reading strongly in the last couple of weeks. There's some good news on that front, but um, I can't give it away. So you'll have to maybe... Wait till tomorrow online, EDP. Dave, Dave Clark on him. Think makes, 24, go on. Makes a good point, sorry, but yeah, um, need a quick fox in the box type striker. As I've been looking at that, I actually think that's right. It's been a long while since Norwich have had that. Yeah. In my time. Yeah, well, time. you think I mean, you think back to maybe a Simeon Jackson type of player, don't you? Yeah, I just, like just comes alive in the box, got an eye for goal, maybe outside the box in terms of linking the play, isn't the most um, refined or, or op- polished option, but in the box, comes alive. If you service him, he'll be there. He's got that pace to run in behind. All I'd say to that, though, mate, is, is what, again, referencing what Stuart Webber told me when they signed Marley Watkins, he felt that he was the one who, uh, I think, at the end of last season, he, he sort of said he felt they needed something a little bit different in terms of the striker mix. But then he, subsequently, after Marley Watkins came in, he feels Marley Watkins could tick that box because he can run in behind. You look at his show reel, the amount of goals he scored for Barnsley last season, it's literally ball over the top, relieving pressure, like a hair in behind coolness in the box as well so he's a bit scrappy as well he's a bit gnarly at times he's tends, he was chasing lost calls as a yeah, last yeah. a little bit a la Grant Holt you know and he always did that guy get you every time he chased the lost calls down and you know I saw Marley doing that a few yeah, times. yeah yeah I like him I like it and I know Stuart Webber is a big fan and there was a lot of interest in him across the championship including over the border definitely a championship style striker I yeah think. and then he's got that hunger because we all know his career path now he basically got released by Swansea dropped into the non-league game had to then go up to Scotland and he's had to work his way back so he is one, a lot of parallels have been drawn now with what's happening here with maybe the Lambert era in the early beginnings. You know, yeah. you, lads who are hungry, maybe have been looked over, passed over in the past, something to prove. And for me, you can't have enough of those in your squad because I think both inside and outside the camp over the last sort of six months or so, it's been quite clear the sound white's coming out. That hunger, that edge had gone. You know, they, they were a little bit in their comfort zone, so we needed a big shake-up. Let's go and get some of these questions that are firing through. Got idea about who will get the captains on. Yeah, just seeing that. Yeah, Which yeah. Kind of links into what I was saying about Zimmer and barking his orders. I mean, Russ you could see him as captain material, yeah. I I could certainly when Rusty's not playing. Well, Rusty's club, club captain. And, yeah, yeah. You know, and quite rightly so. But yeah. I could see. Yeah, Zimmerman just had that. Yeah, it, it was noticeable last night. It was noticeable how vocal he's yeah, been, was encouraging, yeah, was trying to organise players, and yeah, I think he's got captain material. But as long as he stands up to the challenge of the championship, you know, it's too early to say. Yeah. That's just David Wells and Ross. Um, sorry, no, that was Glenn, Glenn, yeah, no, Ross, just yeah. to come back on David's point. No, no new contract, um, but um, as I say, it's, it's good news in terms of tell me where afterwards it, what the good news is. Where it might, I don't know the where it might be. Yeah, <laughs> walls have ears, mate. Walls have ears. So, um, well, talking to company yeah, arm. Let's not get into that in this place. Thing. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. In ter- terms of armband, I mean, last night Angus couldn't let him out. I think Josh Murphy took it. Um, at half time and that yeah, sort of gesture, yeah, yeah but what you've hit the nail on the head because I think Daniel Farker was a little bit bemused when he was when when they announced Russell Martin was going to retain the armband and, and he was asked subsequently about that and, and what does, does that significantly mean he's going to play every week week in week out and I think whether that's that seems to me always like an English type of thing you know maybe an obsession with, with us here in this country yeah. that the armband is, is right first name on the team sheet going to play week, week in week out I think, reading between the lines, Daniel Farker doesn't see the bestowing of the armband as indicative that 
right, Russell is now going to play every week. I think that is more the influence he's got in the dressing room. He's, he's a big personality, um, and he's also that bridge between the coaching staff and the players, rather than, yeah, he's inked in now. If he's fit, he plays. I don't think it's that. So I, I think that's probably going to get passed around, is, is my honest opinion. If Russ doesn't play, then, you know, you've got the likes of Alex Tete, um, you know, Jerome, you know, them sort of experienced guys. Uh, I, I don't really think it's really a, a mega issue for Daniel Farker. Got an interesting um, one here from um, cool. Nick Dill. Is yep. Jamal Lewis have good enough to play a part this season for the first team? Good question. Is he above Toffolo in the uh, left back picking order? Well, he certainly he certainly capitalised on that. again. Harry's one is has got a few few niggles. He was at the game last night, but he wasn't involved. Just yeah. watching with, with Remy Matthews again yeah. from Miami Paul. He, he trained away from the main group. Yeah, it was it was Toffolo, Pinto, and um, Wes. Wes were doing the light yeah. drills away yeah, yeah. from the main group. I never even got involved in the small side. Of right. Games. Last night, I noticed they were all yeah. together watching the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so clearly at the minute, you know, through no fault of the lad's own, he's not able to to, to press his claims. Jamal Lewis in contrast, has really grasped the nettle. And um, and I did a piece with Daniel Farker last week after Stevenage, and, and he's very impressed with him. He thinks he's a young man with a lot of potential. Stuart Webber thinks the same. You know, 12 months down the line, he, he could be a real live first-team option. Right now, no, for the simple reason they've obviously brought in James Husband. And I think once James Husband is up to speed, you know, he had a, an injury-interrupted season at Middlesbrough, um, but he clearly has been brought in with a view to being the first choice. Yeah. Who, who's who's the shadow in terms of you know when husband's not available? That is an interesting debate. I think it comes down to hunger. I think if yeah. Daniel Parker sees the hunger, yeah. he's certainly not afraid to give these guys a go. No, we've seen them. We've seen see. It's good to see. Yeah. I don't think anybody in the crowd. That's one thing I've noticed over the last three or four games and being out here. I don't think anyone from the back to the front yeah. to the subs bench can be sure of their place. It doesn't matter. No. You're Cameron Jerome, which is what, which is what you want. Striker, which is what you want. Yeah. You know Madison, who's only starting out. If you show yeah. the hunger, I, I just feel. But at the moment, he hasn't got his any favourites. It's a blank canvas, and if you impress yeah. him, yeah, yeah. that's when you're going to end up in the first team. If you get in the first team, carry on impressing him. But I also think he's got that bit of steel about him. Yeah. But if he gives you that chance, yeah. and you don't take it, and you suddenly think, yeah, I'm right, I've arrived, yeah, yeah. you're going to be oiked out, and you're going to be back in on the bench again. Yeah. Which is good to see, which is what a manager should do. Yeah, you know? 100%. I haven't really seen that since the Lambert era, to be quite honest. Yeah, I wouldn't agree, would, would agree with that, mate. I mean, John, John Parker, going back to the questions, any news on new coaches? Are they still looking for a British coach? I think the answer is they are looking to, to make an appointment, certainly on, on the keeping side of it. There's a chap called Ed Wooten uh, who stepped up from the academy uh, and he's working with the keepers as we speak. He's, he's quite highly rated, I believe. But I think they would like to make a make an appointment in that area. Nationality, I, th- I think it's fair to say that that isn't a priority now. You know, I can understand when Daniel first came in and brought his guys, Eddie and, and Christian and, and uh, Chris Domagola. Um, you know, there was a feeling, I think, from, from Stuart Webber um, that they needed that British presence and clearly at that stage Alan Irvin was still an option on the table didn't happen uh, they kept the continuity with, with Frankie McAvoy and Dean Kiley that hasn't worked out as, as we know in, in recent in recent times so no I, I don't think it's a prerequisite now that they feel they need a British coach um, you know and, and again we'll see some would, would feel that that might be might be an, an oversight um, but one thing I would say about Daniel Farker he, he is a man who will leave no stone, no stone unturned, and no. uh, I don't think he'll be caught out by anything to do with with English football or the championship. So, you know, whether he's got a British coach in his backroom team or not, um, I necessarily wouldn't think think that's a major issue, mate. Now, there's um, a question here again from um, Nick Deal about what, what, is it with you, what is it with you, and Nick Deal? I don't know. It just keeps popping up with um, <laughs> questions that I can answer. Remember, I'm, I'm looking at it from a small letterbox, sometimes over 100 metres away from what's going on. Yeah, He's got... asking about Branchich. He's got a smooth operator. Does he look the business? Yes, in a word. You think he is? Yeah, I like him. Yeah, I'm He's worried got... about his physical stature. You are. I'm worried about his physical. He's stature. a big unit. Do you think so? Yeah, he might be tall, but not sort of. Yeah, big. yeah. Well, he's bigger than Madison, put it that way. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, I like him. I think. Um... You're bigger than Madison. <laughs> Hello, Cobb, lad. Won't have Calls a word said. Won't have a word said. Yeah, Midland boys this together. Um, Vrancic, yeah. Well, I mean, there's no doubt. Left foot, love that. I mean, with if he doesn't have three shots a game, then he's not happy, clearly, because no. he seems to be averaging three or four digs from he long range. He likes a free kick as well. He likes a free kick, yeah. Um, we saw that right back going back to the Cove game, you know, a couple of deliveries from, from corner kicks. Uh, somebody took me to task. Tongue-in-cheek was, was drawing a parallel with a certain England number seven who used to play for Manchester United. All right. Yeah. Only, only in the sense that he's able to put a ball where he wants to. Now, we haven't seen that, for my, in my opinion, too, too often with Norwich in recent seasons. Set-piece threat, 
get it on the money, get players coming across their markers in a box. And it's such a big part of the game now, set-piece goals. You know, It's oh, such yeah. a big part of the game. And if, if you haven't got somebody who can deliver the ball, then... You know, you're missing out on a massive opportunity to potentially score goals. If you can clear them at first, mate. Yeah, exactly. From the corner, exactly. I'd have them on the pitch every game because that exactly. frustrates the living daylights out. Correct. Of you when you can't, the, the, the corner taker doesn't clear that first. Yeah, yeah. You know, Beckham, a certain number seven, you know, Lampard used to clear the first man, and immediately you got danger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. But the amount of times last year, the, the first defender, even on the 18 yard box, they weren't clearing the guy on the 18 yard box. Exactly. So if Rankins can come in and yeah. do, do that, yeah. Penny in all day long for me. Yeah, and, and as I say, um, I think we touched on it right at the start of uh, the discussion this afternoon. Him and Reed really like the way they're dovetailing already. I mean, you basically got almost Vrancic in front and, and Reed is sort of sweeping behind. There was, a, there was a little incident about six minutes in last night where Reed snapped into a tackle, ball span off in Vrancic's direction, killed it instantly, look up, ping 40 yards crossfield into Wiltshire's path. And, and you just think if those two, and Daniel Farker said it last night, if those two dominate that area of the park, then more often than not, I think Norwich are going to win yeah. games because that is, in his world, massive. That is, to me, the key battleground. If Norwich are dominant in that central area and have got everything that they need in terms of able to put a foot in, able to you know shut down attacks and spring attacks with a goal for it, then I think it could be a successful season But because that is, that's almost the heart, heart of the Farker uh, philosophy for me. What else have we got, Paul? It was yeah, about, about the 20, under 23 here. Adam Harvey's asked, he's the young 19 year old Belgian striker yep. in the trial. Has he, yep. he ain't been in the first team or the 23s? He scored, didn't he? He, did, he, yeah, he, uh, he should, should have another one, didn't he? He scored one from about six yards. That was late in the game. Yeah, yeah. You, you'd, yeah. You'd, gone to the, uh, you'd gone back to your car, because of the heat. No, I got that one. I got that one. I missed his goal because <laughs> it, it, it got, um, he got, it got whizzed across the box at a Yeah, it almost just hit him, didn't it? And he came fair. across really fast in yeah. the far part. Yeah, so yeah. That's my excuse for missing that one. Fair, I got enough. Across that. fair enough, I'll let you off. But um, you. yeah, no, in answer to that question, spoke to Matt Gill after the game. Both him, uh, Will Wright, a lad on loan, the centre back from Hitchin, and the uh, ex Liverpool midfielder Adam Phillips. Basically, they've committed to come out for the whole of the tour. They're on trial. Richard Money was here, along with Stuart Webber, watching the 23s um, on yesterday afternoon. And basically, I think they'll make a decision at the end of the tour. Um, in terms of development or first team, I think those three will probably be a bit far away from the first team. I couldn't really see them coming in because, for a simple reason, if they were. Looking, be looking at them as potential first teamers. They'd be training for the first team, yeah. and we saw it Tuesday um, at, at, at the, where the where the club are based. There's two training pitches adjacent to each other. There was a first team session, all the first team lads, and then pitch next to it was Matty Gill, Darren Huckerby, and the 23s. And those three lads were firmly with the 23s. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I think it's safe to say they are being looked at with a view to being part of the development pot at this stage. Well, so we got do, John Parker. Do you feel Wiltshire is back in the frame for starts? Oh, no, no, I don't, um, I don't see it. I think what we have at the minute, I mean, it was six, basically 16 fit players available last night. You know, 11 starters, five on the bench. Daniel Farker said it'll be 16 again for Bielefeld on Friday. I think it's basically needs must at the minute. You know, um, you know, I was, I was thinking to myself the other day, you've basically got six or seven frontline first team players who, who are either unavailable longer term, the Louis Thompsons, the closest to Pritchards, or as you touched on there, Paul, you know, currently out, you know, top below. Wes Pinto, Pinto yeah. so they're light on numbers uh, ultimately, and I think, I think that's why he's getting a look in at the minute. And obviously Russell Martin they manage him a little bit with, with his back. You know he hasn't he hasn't done anything like the Zimmerman type of uh, minutes on the pitch. Not with a good engine and a strong lad, but yeah, I see Daniel Farker gets a little bit frustrated with his first touch. That's, that's putting him on. I am putting him on. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. you know it's it, it's trying, we're trying to keep it light. It's all pre season, a bit of fun as well out here. Yeah, it's yeah. also like. He's, he gets very frustrated with his first touch, and I saw it again last night. His first touch yeah. let him down, yeah. but he puts in the effort and he beats people. And he's a strong man; don't get knocked off the board at all. But yeah, he's, yeah. No, but, you yeah. know, is how long do you give? So I don't think he's the. I don't think he's been Norwich's greatest signing. He hasn't set the world alight or pulled up any trees, is how he used to say for, yeah. when he came from Wigan. But yeah. um, you know, how long do you give him? I think he's been given a chance by Daniel. Yeah, Fogger, yeah, but I'm not yeah. quite sure. You know, how much longer you give him? No, that was he's on big wages as well. So. I think the answer to that is yes, mate. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's quite clear. As much as they've managed to, you know, House has gone out, Doran's gone out, we don't need to revisit that episode. But there are other lads in that squad who probably aren't going to feature, and we, we can all sort of pinpoint which ones, because they're not really, you know, playing in the first 11 at the minute. But they're obviously under the contract, and then it becomes a, a situation is, is there suitors out there? Are they going to be able to give them what they're giving them here? Is the money right in terms of what would Norwich want for these type of players? Wilshire fits into that category. Wouldn't I think you, you'd probably put Naismith in that category? Jarvis, Tony Andrew, um, Tony Andrew, 
my understanding, he's, he basically was at Coventry um, recently. Couldn't get a deal together there. Um, but clearly the fact that, he's, again, he's won, he's firmly with the 23s out here. Yeah. He's not featuring this season. If, if it's right for all parties, he would he would move on. And there's a, there's a group of players there. And I think probably when the dust settles and we're six months into the season, I'll be surprised if Wiltshire is part of it. Okay, okay mate, listen. up Matt Jarvis then as well. So but I did warn everybody. Being a West Ham yeah, fan, Mr Jarvis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Impressive start and then disappeared off the rise. So we've got Ross and then Yeah, let's, let's kick on with a few questions, mate. Yeah. Um, do you think that Norwich will reinvest the 12 million and what type of player opposition do we need most? I mean, we've heard that a few from the fans that are over here. What are we going to spend the 12 million on? Well, you know yeah. more about the mechanics of the 12 million because it's certainly not 12 million anyway. No. Even, if it, even if they were going to give that to Daniel Farber yeah. to spend, it wouldn't be 12 million because no. of the cost of wages. No, no. So I okay. think maybe your best place to answer Ross in that. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, basically, the way it's been outlined to me is that without going drilling deeply into the financial situation and overdrafts and, and what what was the situation at the end of the last season, what the situation is now, there will be part of that fee which will probably go to clearing the overdraft and, and thereafter, you know, everything you hear from Daniel Farker is that maybe they can do one or two bits more of business, but yeah, completely re- put out of your mind any idea that you get in. And obviously, it's, you know, it's undisclosed officially. It might be eventually up, up to 12, but, you know, it might be 10 plus add-ons as we stand. But even if it was 10 million, they are not now flush with 10 million in, in Norwich's bank account. It just no. doesn't work like that. Uh, and even if they were, as I say, a proportion of that has to basically balance books. And, uh, and that's the reality. And we've and to, to, be, to be fair, the Weber and Stone, they've maintained that position unaltered since... The, the final whistle last season against QPR. I remember the following day, in fact, um, as, a, as a local media, we went down to the training ground. They basically laid it all out that this summer was going to be very much reducing the numbers in the squad, reducing the wage bill, trying to obviously remain as competitive as they can be. But the financial figures, when you're out of the, the Premier League for another season with one more parachute payment, dictate that you, you would love to buy any play. I mean, look at Middlesbrough. They are spending money like it's going out of fashion. Yeah. Norwich simply can't, you know, operate on that level. So it's a cut in your cloth accordingly. And and reiterate what Daniel Farker said to me last night. He knew that. He knew the situation. He's coming here with his eyes wide open, and he's willing to take that brief on. He knows that it's almost can he develop players, uh, young hungry players, uh, and still get them competitive at the top end of the table. But I think the era of the, the five and six million pound arrivals for now is, is over. Interesting, because Chris Dayton has got a little question along those lines as well about Naismith staying and being part of Farker's plans. Another. High, high profile signing costs a lot of money, probably on decent wages yeah, as well. Yeah. So Chris is asking, do you think Nathan is going to stay? No. I, I th- well, I mean, he'll stay if, as I just touched and on be there. Part of Farker's plan. Is yeah. The well, part of this question. the second part of the question, probably not. I would no, say because if, if he was, then he, he would be starting these games. I, I, off the top of my head, I can't. It wasn't at, wasn't at Cambridge, wasn't at Lowestoft, but I'm not sure how many of the preseason games he's actually started. He's started and scored at Lowestoft. Yeah. Yeah. So. But but. Yeah, since we've got, since we've stepped up in opposition, he's not been in you know he's not been in, in a front line position, and I think, but that's a difficult one because as we all know, you know they pushed about to sign him and closer, and uh, you know if you're Stephen Naismith, you're not going anywhere unless it's right for you, and as, as much as you want, as it might need to be right for the football club as well. So no, I don't. To answer the question, I don't see him being involved. No, maybe I think forward. that kind of answers Adam Harvey's questions yeah. about any, the truth in the Snodgrass link. I mean, he's going to be another one. If he comes back, he'll be on big wages. No, he's no, a West Ham no, fan. No, no, no. Wouldn't mind seeing him going because he hasn't set any, um, he hasn't pulled up any trees at West Ham, that's for no. sure. He looks a bit unfit. It's a couple of times I've seen him. Yeah. So I can't see him returning to Norwich. No, he? the bottom line is, financially, that wouldn't make sense. Don't think it makes sense for the player mm. either. You know, I mean, he left, I'm trying to think of the timeline now. Did, did he leave when, yeah, he did when Norwich got relegated under Hugh and he jumped ship uh, to hold, didn't he? Yeah. Because he wanted to play in the Premier League. Why now? Unless he, he feels that you can't do it in the Premier League anymore, which personally I wouldn't think would be the case. So, I've, I mean, he had a good season with Hall before he joined West Ham, didn't yeah, he, last season? Yeah, so. he, he never really, never really sparked yeah. West Ham at all. No, I'm I think, he, sure what that was I think Robert Snodgrass could still do the job in the Premier League. And so, I like Robert Snodgrass. Well, well certainly, I mean, the fine, I mean, we keep going around in circles here, but the finances are, he's going to be able to earn more in the Premier League than the Championship. So, no, that's a non-starter. Non-starter. Anything else, Paul? Just one more from Oliver Dixon, really. Do you think that Norwich will adapt to Fark's philosophy with a passing game and utilise it successfully in the Championship? Well, they're going to have to, because he, he's, he's, he's not rigid in the sense of maybe Alex Neil where there won't be a plan B. I mean, we've already seen that. You know, this you can have a debate all day long about uh, formations and what, what is a 4-3-3 and when it's become a 4-1-4-1. 
but is I think there's going to be enough flexibility in how they adapt within games and from game to game. Um, and they're obviously they'll be well up because you get the sense with him and his coaching staff they'll be very well briefed in terms of the opposition strengths and weaknesses. But but ultimately the core philosophy is, and we touched on it, is retain the ball. If we have to start from deep, if Angus Gurney is going to start attacks, then so be it. Um, invite players onto you, break the press, and then you're through it, and then you're looking for your, you know, your really attacking players, your Pritchard, your Wezzers, your Madisons, Oliveira, Jerome, width and pace in wide areas to really cause damage. If you sort of marry up with a bit of steel. That's, that's what that it boils really, down to, yeah. And, we and, got something in the way on a Tuesday yeah, night. Exactly. You know, there's, in February, I think that is, or whenever it is, there's going to be no pretty passing guns no. going to win that alone. You've got no. to marry that up with some pretty... You know, some good work right? yeah. and a bit of steel and a bit of muscle it is a championship after all but that's, that's why again as I say putting in the caveat that it was MSV Duesburg against 10 players at, uh, no disrespect well I'm going to be disrespectful a non-league round uh, it was well, non-league would have been good I think <coughs> yeah let's not it, right, tier uh, 7 or yeah. tier 8 game yeah, let's, yeah. throw that in with the thunderstorms yeah no, we'll gloss over that Yeah, yeah we're being yeah. prima donnas here but uh, <laughs> it wasn't the best working conditions but what I'm basically saying is yeah Allowing for all of that, I still thought the two centre backs show against decent opposition. You know, they're Bundesliga two. I think their season starts next week, so they're right at the back end of their pre season. That wasn't an easy test. And, and they, they were pulling their tackles either, weren't they? No, 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 that was competitive. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it was a red card on Nelson Oliveira, wasn't there? But no, they, they looked like they had a bit about them. And, and both of them have said, I think, when they were unveiled, that they, they love a tackle, they love the English style, they love basically the, the physicality and that brand of defending. So. I wouldn't put either of them two in the Tim Close uh, cultured centre back class, but for my money, that's what Norwich badly needed because, you know, I picked one game out back end of last season. Leeds, you're three 0 up at Ellen Road going into half time. If you walk off that pitch drawing three three, something has gone badly wrong, and something did go badly wrong, and it wasn't just an isolated incident. Far too many games of that nature because they didn't have enough steel. They didn't defend their box. They couldn't defend set pieces and corners as it was that day. And if you can't do that. You know these clubs in the championship will soon work out where the Achilles heel is, and they will. They will. And if you're vulnerable there, you'll get exploited there week in, week out. And they did. And that was probably Alex Neil's greatest failing that he didn't a have the players and b the willingness to sort of alter how he wanted to go. I don't think Farker would be that ideological. I think he strikes me as quite a pragmatic individual. Yeah. Right, mate. Now we've gassed on here for best part of what, three, what? three quarters what? of an hour. I don't know. We got any more? Do you think we are low on wingers after Jacob leaving? Ross Lemon. Um, well, let's, let's see what we've got. I mean, Josh, obviously. Wing backs. You've got out and out winger in Josh. Maybe yeah. you've got plenty of wing backs. Maybe we have got one out and out winger if Josh was injured. I mean, obviously, we're players. saying probably Jarvis is, is not going to be involved, you know, through A, injury, and B, probably choice. So you take him out of the equation. Wiltshire, as long as he stays on the books, you know, there's a wide option there. That's, you know, that's, your, that's the thing about it. That's a fair comment, really. I mean, yeah, you've got more wing backs as opposed to attacking wingers. Yeah. Sort of like Which is, yeah, that's a fair point, Paul, because. You know, if you play into that four-three-three shape, then you probably want your whip to come from your your overlapping fullbacks, and we all know that's Evo Pinto to a T. Yeah. Bombing down, uh, down outside. You know, uh, just an inverted top of a wide midfielder, and, and on the left-hand side, husband. Apparently, that's we haven't quite seen it yet. We haven't really seen a lot of him, but apparently, he's very good as an overlapping, attacking-minded fullback. So, no, I think I think they're probably all, all right on that on that scale because ultimately. Yes, you need that. You need that width from outside, but it's centrally. We, we, we keep hearing it. We keep seeing it. Centrally is where Norwich are going to do a lot of their damage, and so you need good technicians in the middle of the park. Yeah. And probably your width would come from your fullbacks. I think that's fair to say. Anything else, mate? Leisner a possibility, says Chris. Um, Leisner is. Uh, let me think. Now off the top of my head, he's the centre back from um, FC Union Berlin. He was linked a couple of weeks ago. One they're aware of. Um, did ask Stuart Weber about that, but this was prior uh, Franker coming in, and, and clearly now Frank has come in the building with Zimmerman closer. Whether you like it or not, Russell Martin could do a job there. I think four centre backs. Uh, I think they're probably well stocked. Be in abundance now. Yeah, think, yeah. I, I think there might be other areas of the pitch. Um, you know, uh, Daniel Farker said, didn't he, when Louis Thompson was confirmed to be out for the foreseeable, plus Dorans plus House, and that maybe they need to look at central areas, midfield. So, so possibly one more in that area. Um, but, yeah, I, I can see why the question would be asked because they do look a little bit light. I mean, you only have to look at the amount of minutes Zimmerman is playing to tell you that if they get an injury or two, you are starting to look a bit threadbare in the centre of the park. So, yeah. wouldn't rule out another centre-back. Wouldn't think it's going to be Leisner. Again, from, from what I understand, uh, apparently Union Berlin are really putting together a squad who they think can push for promotion to the Bundesliga this season and he, he is seen as quite a key part of that. So. Not quite sure. 
sure if we're still there. Yeah, I think we're still going, mate. Yeah, we all closed then. People are getting bored, obviously, so they're switching off in their drugs. I think we've had issues with connections out here the last three or four days. One or two, mate. Yeah, I think it's starting to trip us up again, yeah. One or two. Casey, looking update on the three new lads. I think we touched on that, the three trialists. Yeah, I mean, basically, just that, just to reiterate, as we said earlier, they're out here for the duration of this trip. Richard Mooney, Stuart Webber, Matty Gill, Darren Ockerbeat. They're all making decisions on what they see in training, what they see in the games. Um, and I think all three would be if they were to come in on a permanent basis with a view to being part of the development setup. So, uh, in terms of first team, no, I, I wouldn't look at any of those three being in the mix. All right, mate, I think. That's it, really, yeah. Yeah, I think, most, I think most of these good people want to get back to whatever they're doing. Yeah, we've got a lot to get on with, haven't we? It's not all. Uh... I have, mate, you have. <laughs> I think you're looking. We've got some sunshine. There is some sun coming through, so... Yeah, yeah no, there's those beers in the fridge are starting to cool, but so now I've yeah, got some yeah. laptop maintenance to do before we go. All right, then. Yeah. Okay, on that note, because you're boring them now, mate. <laughs> well, uh, we'll say thanks for watching. Um, we're going to be both at the, the 23s game, which is tomorrow lunchtime, uh, back at Norwich's training base. Fine track branch wides under 23s, and then later in the evening, it's the final game for the first team. Really tough test against Armenia Bielefeld, another Bundesliga 2 side at Bielefeld's ground, their final game of their pre season. So that will be a considerable step up again, I think Daniel Farker was telling me last night. So, you know, usual channels um, will be pumping out the content. This man producing great images. Back and, behind uh, the camera, where I film more. Yeah, 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 yeah. Back behind the camera. Um, but thanks for watching, and um, as I say, We'll we'll all keep in it. Uh, cross Pink and um, Facebook page, Pink and page that you're on now. Uh, we've got the new YouTube Pink and channel. Go and have a look on that. There's some some video content gone up this morning from Daniel Farker on, on Jacob Murphy. What that means for the transfer pot, uh, and obviously the EDP uh, in print and, and online. So thanks for watching. Um, we'll see you again. Cheers. Cheers. Bye.